The first official piece of marketing for Jurassic World Dominion has now finally been revealed to the public. And in it, we get a prologue or origin story of how John Hammond was able to get Tyrannosaur DNA for the first Jurassic Park, as well as a mini follow-up to the last movie, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Since the footage has now officially been released to everyone on YouTube and will be premiered on television later tonight, I thought it was finally time to go over what we saw and talk about what it could mean for the film that's due out in June of next year. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we've got to talk about that opening for Jurassic World Dominion that just came out. Or at least, this was originally meant to be the opening of the movie. Now, I'm not so sure, and that's mainly due to the fact that what you all just got to see right here is actually a different cut compared to what we all saw in special IMAX screenings of F9. You see, in the theater, this whole Jurassic World logo wasn't available, and it looks like they even added special music to the beginning of the Cretaceous era sequence as well. Not to mention that the footage went on just a little while longer, showcasing the continued pursuit of the T-Rex in the modern day. Now to start from the beginning, it is rather obvious that some of the dinosaurs that we got to see during the Cretaceous period both did not live during the same time frame as some of the showcase species, but it's also true that they probably didn't look identical to that in real life, which we're going to go into further along with the important cinematography and beautiful dinosaur battle that are shown here. And speaking of which, there actually is a way for you to see a more accurate replication of the Cretaceous period in something else. Now before I go any further, I want to mention to you guys that today's video is sponsored by CuriosityStream, the world's first streaming service addressing our lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. Offering up thousands of non-fiction titles, documentaries, and exclusive originals from some of the world's best filmmakers, this is the place to find fascinating stories that are entertaining without any of the reality show nonsense. CuriosityStream is the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, and the Disney Plus for the scientists in us all. I think CuriosityStream is the perfect sponsor for my channel due to their wide selection of dinosaur documentaries, especially this one called Ancient Earth, which actually has a Cretaceous segment talking about some of the species in the Jurassic World Dominion prologue, so I could see it being a good comparison between Hollywood and the real world. CuriosityStream is the entertainment brand for people that want to know more, and it's available on Roku, Android, Xbox, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon, Apple, and several smart TVs as well. New shows come out every week, so whether you want to learn about science, sports, music, technology, nature, or history, you can find it all on Curiosity Stream. Just go to curiositystream.com slash Clayton for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And just for you guys, use promo code Clayton and you'll save 25% off, which comes out to only $14.99 a year. That's just $1.25 per month and the perfect gift for Black Friday. So click the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash Clayton and save 25% off right now, which again is only $14.99 for the whole year. Very affordable compared to other streaming services. So once again, thank you to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to Jurassic Park. Now, when it comes to how these animals are handled in the Jurassic World Dominion prologue, I still stand by my thoughts on them preferably swapping out some of the species for creatures that would have actually coexisted back in the Cretaceous period. But in the end, I don't really think this all matters too much at the end of the day. I know that some people like to think of Jurassic Park as a very scientifically sound franchise, but even going back to the first film and observing the Amber Mines in the Dominican Republic, which shouldn't be Cretaceous era at all, I don't really think those critiques make as much sense sense as we've been led to believe. Sure, I personally wish Jurassic Park was a little more accurate to reality, but in the end, this is what they've chosen to go with. And that trajectory gave us what I consider to be one of the most iconic pieces of dinosaur action that I think we've seen in a long while. The Quetzalcoatlus is beautiful in this footage, and we can actually see how they dwarf the pteranodons and dine on dead fish in a pretty awesome way here. By the way, I was unable to pick up on the fact that one of the Nasutoceratops actually has a broken horn during the massive herding scene which I thought was a nice touch. It really adds to the realism of these animals being unique individuals in their own lives and history during the Mesozoic. Whether it lost them fighting some giant theropod or in a mating display, I don't know. I just thought it was a pretty cool touch. Now, the T-Rex and Giganotosaurus fight is really interesting because I think the designs of both these animals are radically different to what anyone would really consider to be Jurassic in the traditional sense. For starters, the Rex has a lot of fuzzy plumage around its body, and the Giga just looks like a gigantic shark dinosaur with that angular head and the white assortment of spikes on its back. I mentioned 
mentioned before that this could be done in order to give it some in-universe continuity with the Allosaurus, which is a relative of the Giga, and I think that may be why they've chosen to do that. Now, this new dinosaur in some shots looks really menacing and cool, while in others, looks kind of more like a monster than it does an animal. I think this is usually when the mouth is closed for me, but that's just how I'm personally processing it all right now. So then we go into the fight, and boy, was it a short one. Unlike Jurassic Park 3, where we actually saw exactly how the Spinosaurus killed the T-Rex, this one is left up in the air and made more ambiguous, with the body losing its footing around a small cliff and falling over until we see the close-up of its dying eye. I actually enjoy this sequence a lot because it looks and feels like two wild animals going at it and the environment adds to the ambiance of everything too. It seems like they want to imply that had it not been for the Tyrannosaur losing its footing and kicking rocks into the stream, it could have stood a chance, which is kind of just how it is in the real world when it comes to any sort of brawl. But either way, yeah, it did die, and yeah, uh, that's kind of a bummer since T-Rex always gets his ass kicked in these movies. And really, like, I was not a fan of the fight in Jurassic Park 3. I thought the Jurassic World fight was awesome. This one's short, it's in the past, it looks really cool, but, uh... <laughs> T-Rex really need to die every five seconds, Universal? After that, we see a really cool shot of the mosquito landing on the Rex and taking its blood, which felt very 1990s era Jurassic Park marketing to me, which I'm a big fan of. Before we transitioned 65 million years later and get to see that now famous T-Rex attack on the drive-in. This was a pretty cool scene, but I will admit that I kind of understand more now why my parents and a lot of people at the time didn't enjoy the San Diego sequence in The Lost World so much. Because none of the audience members know anyone that's getting attacked, it does feel sort of like a big silent roar movie that Spielberg described back when the second film wrapped in 1997. That doesn't mean it's not badass and fun though, since there's a lot of cool stuff to observe watching the hunters take on the wrecks and trying to stop it. Speaking of which, did you guys notice that these men come with special patches on their uniforms? Apparently the Department of U.S. Fish and Wildlife has like a lot more to deal with than usual, which again, adds a more realistic touch. This little bit of the Rex getting away and the hunters looking around for it wasn't in the theatrical tease, and instead that came with some shots of the Allosaurus, Gallimimus, and Mosasaurus running wild and attacking things as a sort of short montage. I'm not sure if there is more to come as far as that sizzle reel from CinemaCon goes, but I do believe this is a very well done prologue that helps set the tone for what we can expect to see in Jurassic World Dominion. What's even more exciting though for me is imagining more situations like this, only with Owen Grady, Alan Grant, Claire Deering, Ellie Sattler, all of them thrown into the mix. All the while Dr. Ian Malcolm gets to tell everyone he told them so all those years ago during Jurassic Park and the Lost World. That's what really gets me excited for Dominion because those are people I recognize, I care about, I'm invested in this franchise, and to see the culmination of all that stuff in this final film, that's what I'm looking for. Personally, I think this teaser acts as its own short film now, and one that I think is legitimately better than Battle at Big Rock. The behavior of the dinosaurs and shot composition in general makes it one of the best looking Jurassic Park things in the franchise, and right up there with J.A. Bayona's epic shots he gave us in Fallen Kingdom, which is still a really damn cool movie to look at. But I will admit that just seeing dinosaurs attacking random people, that's not going to quite cut it for me and probably a lot of other audience members when it comes to the new movie. Which is why I think throwing Dr. Grant and the others in scenes like this will really be what makes for a memorable movie in the coming months. This prologue is cool. It's a a really fun short film. Uh, it's probably not in the final cut anymore, which is fine, but all the cool stuff that we saw right here, just imagine what it would be like to see Dr. Grant's point of view looking at that T-Rex at the drive-in. Just imagine Ian Malcolm frantically jumping over a Jeep and trying to tell someone that chaos has come to the world, or Ellie trying to help Owen and Claire do something involving Velociraptors. That's what I'm excited to see, and if you put all those characters like in a scene like this, man, that's, that's what I'm hyped for. But hey, these are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter. Whatever yours happen to be, I'd love to hear them. In the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens as well as all of my in-gen executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and in-gen hunters as well. Guys, it really means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.